hello. My name is Rupert Hutra and I'm the Chairman and Chief Researcher of the Huron Report. And today I'd like to give you the highlights of our latest list, the 2022 Huron Most Successful Chinese Heritage Brands. Now, I suppose the point of this list is that I meet so many entrepreneurs uh, in China and beyond, and they're often saying to me, oh, you know, I hope that my business will still be around in 100 years. I hope that my business will become a, a long-term brand. I met somebody, in fact, yesterday in South China who's built a school. The school's got over 10,000 children uh, studying there. And he was saying he doesn't just hope his school will be around for 100 years. He hopes it'll be like some of the most um, the, the famous old British schools will be around for several hundred years. And, and, and I suppose, why not? And so this list that we put out today is really a list of role models for entrepreneurs today and people wanting to understand which are the most successful Chinese heritage brands. So, and how do we define this list, which is now actually in its third year? And we define, first of all, success as a measure of value today. So it's, it's all very well to be an old brand, but if you've got zero sales and zero market cap, zero value, <laughs> that's not enough. So um, the likes of a Baijiu brand, Maotai, today it's got a value of 300 billion US dollars. <laughs> That's um, pretty significant. So value made up 40% weighting of this list. Uh, the second one was history. So how long has your brand been around? And here it becomes quite mind boggling, you know, because there are brands here on our list, actually, the, and I'll tell you a little bit, the top two, but they come from the Ming Dynasty and the Qing Dynasty. So You've got, a, you've got a consumer in 500 years or 400 years ago who's actually going out to the shops, and, and you have to sort of picture yourself here, going to the shops and asking for the same brand um, as a consumer in 2022 is. So anyway, so history made up 40% weighting. And then the third one was uh, a slightly more nefarious um, or difficult one to measure. It's heritage or um, cultural heritage. And this made up 20% of weighting. It's looking at how much of your brand has been linked to the um, to, to to cultural um, significance um, throughout history. So that's the third that's the third angle that we used. So who are the top brands? Who are the most successful old brands in China today? Well, number one is a um, Chinese traditional um, uh, medicine brand. It's called Pian Zi Huang. Um, and it's got not just a 550 year history, but on top of that, it's still worth today 30 billion US dollars. So, I mean, that, that's pretty remarkable when you think about it. To have a brand that's got that much of a history and to still in 2022 have a, a value of 30 billion US dollars, well, that makes it number one in China. And I imagine actually it would make it um, pretty close to the top anywhere in the world. Uh, number two on this list is also a Chinese traditional medicine um, retail brand, and it's called Tong Ren Tang. And, and it's got about 400 years of history, and, and today it's worth just under 10 billion US dollars. Uh, number three is the Baijiu brand Maotai, and it's got a 61 year history. So, actually, although Maotai is a, as a geographical region, it's got a longer history, um, the Maotai brand has only been registered for 61 years. And um, but it is un nonetheless worth 300 billion US dollars as a brand. It's actually the most valuable um, business in China um, today. Um, so that, that that makes up the top three. And you can see through the makeup of this list, you know, sort of what sectors they come from it gives you real insight into some of the most successful old brands in China today. So traditional Chinese medicine or TCM is um, made up 22 of the 100 brands, um, so 22%. Followed by Baijiu uh, with 17%. Between the top two uh, categories, um, they made up uh, just under 40% of this list. Um, third, has to be what you'd expect around the world is food. And then you had sources and, 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 and different spices was fourth. And then restaurant hotels as fifth. So that those five sectors made up two thirds of the list. Anyway, I hope that you enjoy this list. It's, um, uh, it's a fun list to do. Um, because it takes into consideration the history of the brand, but also its relevance today. So 
you know, if you're going to be building a business, uh, it's all very well to think that you might be around in 100 years' time, but you've got to be successful in 100 years' time. And uh, that's uh, quite another story. So anyway, I hope that this can um, give you some new inspiration. <laughs> and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.